All right, episode 217. Look, today we're going to talk about does the government want you to actually own a home or not? We're going to really break this down. It's going to get real deep. You're going to want to tune into this one. We're going to get started right now. Really? <laughs> All right, episode 217. Today, we are going to be talking about, if you heard at the very beginning, does the government actually want you to own a home? Um, and, and the reason why we're going to talk about that is because the last week, I don't know if you saw, but the Department of Justice is really looking into it to uh, possibly make it illegal for sellers to offer a, a compensation or commission to buyer's agents. So... This might sound a little conspiracy theorist, but uh, just tune in and follow us and and leave your comments down below because um, I'm sure there's a lot of hot opinions on this one. But before we get started, of course, we got to thank our sponsors who they don't believe in the conspiracy theorists. So this is only our views here at uh, the only real estate <laughs> podcast worth listening to. Um, and also go join our Facebook group, the only real estate group worth being a part of. That way you can share your views there as well. Um, but today's show is sponsored by... Mortgage Mike. Mortgage Mike giving you that, that Mortgage Mike stamp of approval. Uh, he's a mortgage broker. So um, he made sure to, to, to let me know that. I got to tell right. people that. What that means is he's yeah. able to eliminate the fluff and the fat of that middle management. And he's able to give a lot better competitive commissions. Um, and look, your buyers, they want the lower rate, not the higher rate. So you need to go to MortgageMikeMMGLoans.com. And uh, send all your buyers there. I sent one over there this morning. They're already filling an application. Are you guys doing a lot of buy downs still? Um, we weren't, but I bet you we will because we I just will. I just saw when we were having our Homeward meeting, um, HomewardDFW.com. Dana Wynn, the best property management company out there, she is now managing over 400 doors, over 400 of them. Just had uh, six more come in uh, over the past seven days, but. Um, I just saw on, on your TV there, Brian, that um, the Fed is starting to kick the can down the road whether they're going to do Fed uh, interest rate cuts. <sighs> the Federal Reserve talking very ambiguously about what they're going to be doing in the future and making no real commitments to anything? Nay. Hey, yeah. Shocker. Yeah. yeah. yeah Who won't let you down on commitments is Theron Smith over at Armadillo Home Warranty. He will commit to everything, and he'll always be there, and he'll sing a song while doing it, and he'll give you that Armadillo hard shell protection. Just go to armadillo.one forward slash tour, T-O-R-E, to get that uh, home warranty on your property. And uh, then, look, you need to be doing a podcast. You got to get your message out there. You got to really push this conspiracy theorist that Kelderman's all about. Yes. Um, all not, not us. It's all Kelderman. He's it's going. My show, baby. He's all sourdough. <laughs> all. <laughs> Did you make sourdough pizza? Yeah. Was no, that was whole wheat pizza dough. Whole wheat. That was whole wheat okay. pizza dough. Gotcha. Think okay. about sourdoughs. I get tired of like waiting. So much time. I got to decide I want bread tomorrow at like yeah. 5 p.m. the day before. It's just I don't I don't make decisions that far in advance. Yeah. yeah. I don't know when I'm going to want my bread. I sure. made a uh, keto cheesecake the other day. Sounds like shit. Yeah. It, it, I just used uh, <laughs> monk fruit. And so funny. Yeah, I mean, it I'm tasted out. is so good. It tastes irregular, but I also don't. Irregular or regular? It's just like regular cheesecake. Mm -hmm. I just also I don't tend to eat. Dude, you're from New York. You can't do that. I don't tend to eat a ton of cheese as it is. So when I had the yeah. first slice, but you which eat is a lot like, of cake. No, I don't eat a cake. Okay. And so I don't eat a ton of cheese either. So I had that first like slice of heavy, dense cheese. I felt bad for everybody in the office the next day. Mm. It was, mm. I was gassy. Monk food <laughs> is a problem. It's a problem <laughs> eating too healthy. Yeah. Monk fruit's expensive. Is monk dude. fruit the, the one that you here. also make that uh, fake pulled pork looking thing? No, that's jackfruit. Jackfruit. Yeah. Jackfruit. Yeah. 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 That thing looks crazy. It's just, yeah, it's it's disgusting. disgusting. Not good. They started running out of names to call fruit, so they just started saying something fruit. I know. Uh, yeah. And be Frank Beans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the Awful. guy who named it Jackfruit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a jack. By the way, if you want to um I call this one, it's mine. As we as we go down this rabbit hole today, um, you know, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. I had a lady on Instagram like, where do I listen to your pot or uh, on LinkedIn? Like, where oh. do I listen to your podcast? I'm like, well, I mean, we're everywhere. That's a miss. Except yeah. LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we don't go. No, we go live on LinkedIn. Not anymore. Oh, Jesse. 
Uh, you know, maybe Tour Studios will bring that back. TourStudios.com. Just a short answer. Yeah. So uh, you can go to onlyrepod.com and you can find us everywhere in the onlyrepod.com. But um, look, you know, as I was listening to this Department of Justice kind of, uh, you know, you know, outcome or not even the outcome, what they want to do or what they're suggesting is, is that ultimately their suggestion or what they're looking into is, is making it illegal for sellers to offer buyer's agent compensation. And now I always look for, right, where's the loophole and everything, mm-hmm. right? Where's that gray area? Number one is, is our sellers, sellers theoretically are offering a buyer's agent comp- compensation, but it's really coming from the, the listing broker, right? The listing broker charges a free fee. Yeah. Then that listing broker obviously is offering X percent for, for a co-oping agent to bring their qualified buyer to the house. So, Which is disclosed in the contract. Yeah, I'm only familiar with the Texas listing agreement, but that is very clearly spilled out. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I ask the dumb, dumb question? Isn't that like the most obvious? This has always been disclosed. I've been in yeah. real estate for 11 years now, and this has always been closed. What am I missing about the we snuck it by them thing? I don't know. <laughs> Um, cause it's, it's always been written in there. Yeah. I don't know, but here, here's my thought process because it's like, why is this continuing to be brought up? Where, where's, where's the magician? Who's the magician pulling the strings on this and what's happening off, off screen that you're not seeing. And the thought process to me, as I was kind of walking through this is like, all right, is the government wanting to make it harder for the average American to own a home? Maybe. Right. Because, you know, look, I just asked AI. AI is supposed to have no judgment. Can you look up in the background? I'm trying to interrupt while you're talking. Can you look up in the background? Is there any way to see like uh, what the total legal fees were for the Stitzer Butler, whatever it was called? Stitzer Butt Kiss. Yeah, it's like billions. But um, but there's also settlements. Right. I know KW settled. Right. So I think they settled for like 80. Was it 100 million, 80 million, whatever it is. So many huge numbers have gotten thrown around. But my thought process behind this is like, okay. Where's where's the real action that's happening here? And we're already talking about how homes are more expensive, how interest rates are higher, how the average American's already struggling to purchase a home, right? And the average American builds their net worth off the property they live in, their homesteaded property, right? You know, the the stat from the Fed, by the way, you go in there and you can go search for it from the Fed is that the the average homeowner has a 40 times greater net worth than that of a renter. Right. The average renter is like ten thousand dollars net worth. Yeah. Um, and so that homeowner is four hundred thousand. That would actually be a fun little thing. I'm sorry that you, like I know you're in the middle of looking this up. I don't think we're going to find it because I don't think they like disclose that stuff. But uh, average net worth. Let's do median. Median's more fun. It's more realistic. Median net worth of a homeowner in America. For years, I can actually tell you this for years, they would throw around like, you know, if you didn't own a home, you probably had a couple of grand in net worth. If you did own a home, it was over like two hundred thousand, one hundred eighty thousand, right? Yeah. At, from from a countywide standpoint, so as of twenty twenty one, our av- median is three hundred thousand. Okay, yeah. And so, do, then just do a uh, number of homeowners in America. Yeah. So as we, as we break this down, so I was really kind of like going deep on this to say, okay, why would they? Why? Why did? Do, why does the government care? Mm. Right? Why do they care on this? And and ultimately. You know, even as I just again, I'm asking ChatGPT, and I want to see how how this responds, because um, you can really get some some interesting answers out of out of just AI in general. But you know, number one, it says there's from ChatGPT, there's no evidence to suggest that the government, specifically the Department of Justice, is actively working to make it illegal for sellers to offer compensation. Well, that's not true. I, they're, right? they're, they're, so, one of their legitimate quotes is something to the effect of the exorbitant real estate fees that are being caused. Like that's the, from the Department of Justice talking about why they're why they're continuing this buyer commission discussion. Well, part of it is that yeah, they're saying that it's making houses more expensive. Yes, with, which is not the case. Yes, like, stubbornly high broker fees. That's the exact yeah. article I read from Reuters. Which, exactly. by the way, the average we looked it up on the show. The average commissions are were under six percent right it was like somewhere in the fives and it hadn't changed since i think 1992 i think we did it on the show all the way went back to 1992 so they've been relatively the same since for 20 years that's almost 30 years you know what happened is home values got higher and that percentage number got zeros added to it and now people are like what in the shit and look i don't necessarily 
disagree with this after I think there is diminishing returns based on the percentage model that real estate agents are offered, right? I think your home can reach a price where the agent is not bringing those dollars of value. I've said this on the show before. I don't know what that price is. I'm not going to, for each market, it probably changes, but I do understand the overall idea that some of these numbers have gotten huge. The part that I'm with you that I disagree about is like, I don't understand these, nothing's changed percentage wise. The seller is still taking home the same percentage of gains that they would have no matter when it was. Yes. And, right? and overall, the cost to market homes and the cost to just run a business probably went up. has gone up, yeah. right? So ultimately, ultimately that those have gone up as well. Now you're talking about selling, you know, a million dollar home. Now we're talking about, you know, $50,000 in yeah. total commissions. And the grand scheme of things, is that really expensive? You know, do we do this to ourselves with like, um, with like the million dollar real estate agent where you started flashing Frederick's commission at half a million dollars. And people were like, real estate agents are millionaires. They yeah. all should make less. Yeah. 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 So, all right. I want to, I want to really take the red pill here on this conversation. Cause I like where you guys are going with this. So let's, let's do some fun facts and then we can kind of kick it around wherever we want to go. So uh, there are 82.64 million single houses or single family homes in, in America. Uh, the best that I can kind of see from this list, it seems like about 65% of the nation, 65% uh, of those 82 million homes uh, are owned by their owners. So they're, they're owned by the the, the, the residents, right? So actually higher than I would have thought. Yeah. Honestly. So like, why don't we just say 50 million is a round number? Okay. So let's just say uh, 50 million, Jesse. And if the av those average, those people on average are worth three hundred thousand dollars, then let's just remove the home equity of maybe two hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? And the rest of their net worth is in personal property and things like that. Uh, so what what would fifty million times two hundred fifty thousand be? I don't know if your I'll Apple do calculator is going to do that. It's going to do the thing with the e yeah. and a lot of zeros. It's, it's 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 a lot, right? So the amount of what I'm trying to demonstrate is if we talk about uh, in the fun fundamental question, does uh, does the government want you to own your home? Yes or no? It's 1.25 E13. Yeah, it, which is, <laughs> it's, it's several I trillion dollars, yeah, yeah. I would imagine, right? So <laughs> I just want to paint a picture so we can have some fun with this conversation. Uh, does the government want you to own your home or no? If you were just to paint a picture of how much wealth uh, was available to be transferred, it's $12.5 trillion in wealth. I'm sorry, is that more? 12.5 quadrillion, 12.5 quadrillion <laughs> sounds like a fake word. Yeah. Uh, dollars, apparently. I'm more impressed he knew quadrillion came after yeah, a trillion. I, I would have searched for that number forever. <laughs> Give or take that uh, could potentially be up for grabs. Yes. Right. If we could make it really convenient for a homeowner to potentially transfer that wealth when they're ready to sell to potentially an entity that uh, maybe or maybe is in a private or publicly owned company that maybe or maybe does not have relationships with lobbyist groups in the government and things like that. So, so who I'm is, not going to dive down a direct rabbit hole, well, but I'm just laying the groundwork for why would this be something that the government would ever even want to make? Okay, in? so let's 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 allow that to happen for okay. a second. Let's allow us to go down further um, of that um, dark conspiracy theorist hole. Dun, dun, dun. Right? Whom or who is the largest owner, property owner in America that is not just a just an individual person? Blackstone. Blackstone. Yeah. Right. So Blackstone, how much? How many properties does Blackstone own? It's um, a few hundred thousand at this point. Yeah. Uh, we would just looked it up before. And then you have invitation uh, invitation homes. Uh, yeah, Brookfield, as which is the second one. with this, this. I think the second largest. Yeah. Um, and I thought they go. I thought they went back and forth between. There's three hundred that are three hundred thousand right rental housing using by Blackstone. Okay. There yeah. You go. So if we really, really it look says at point zero three percent of the U.S. market. So yeah, that's what that yeah. says. If we and and look, that's percentage wise, that's really small. Sure. Right. But when you look at everything as a whole, and say, all right, whom who spends the most money from a lobbyist group, and why are they wanting to do it? Right. That is a corporation looking to make more money. And there has been conversations that Americans will move into more of a rental society. Yeah. And, you know, you will the saying is you will own nothing and you will like it. Yeah. Uh, and um, I heard somewhere uh, that the the ultimate goal is, hey, if was, you're looking to move, here. right, you're you're a renter, you're looking to move to, let's say, California. Great. Because invitation or or you know, in someone else, mm -hmm. right? 
they will say you can freely move within the properties that we have yeah. and which to younger generations that are that have been more nomadic yeah. that sounded great yeah. right you don't have to worry about fixing anything you don't have to worry about um, um you know staying in one place but then they then that younger generation started complaining about how expensive things were and how hard it is to achieve the american dream about building wealth yes and when we look again, we break it down. The biggest wealth creator is owning real estate. Yes. And so if the government comes in, Department of Justice makes it illegal for sellers, which I still don't know how they do that. Uh, I don't know how they may, would make it illegal for sellers to offer compensation to a, another agent. Without violating what seems like your right to do whatever it is you want with your money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Seems like they'd have to yeah. violate some of their own laws. Yeah, and when you start asking even AI these questions, AI said, "Look, theoretically, it will make it harder. We don't know how how everything will adapt, but it will make it harder for buyers to to go, you know, basically be unrepresented or make it harder for them because if they want representation, they're going to have to pay for it directly, making it more expensive already." And and for buyers, by the way, it is expensive already for them to buy a home. Well, and that's the thing is that that's the part of this that is uh, that has been the most confusing was other than the people who are currently benefiting from the lawsuit and the sellers that will benefit from one one buy cycle in whatever their market half of their market commission, by the way, is because it has probably going to the agent who sells them. This is like a classic thing of us telling us telling you that we'll sell your house for one percent from a real estate marketing perspective and then showing up and being like, Oh no, by the way, it's actually really like at least 4% because we got for three to the other side. And then they start work. You know what I mean? Like when agents start having those conversations, this feels a lot like that. There's only a very small window to benefit from this from. And then ultimately you're going to be right back on the buy side, paying your own commission, right? All the sellers who sell are going to walk into a market that is, that is still, that is going to require them to pay their own commission. If this works out the way that everybody wants it to. Right. right. There's no real long-term benefit other than adding a certain percentage to the other side of the transaction where buyers are already struggling sometimes to come with three and a half, five percent. We were talking today, it's more expensive than ever out there in general. Yep. Right. Like people are already strapped. I do think there's a control aspect to there's, this look, too. There's right. right? There's a, think of it this way: it becomes a a no longer a transfer of wealth because as you look, it, it will take a cycle in order for this to happen, right? Because you have homeowners that will sell and they'll sell to, to a corporation because they, they make it easy. They pay cash. They'll pay, yeah. you know, 90, 95 cents on the dollar. Right. And, and it's just no hassle. We saw that with when open door came to the market and everything else. And so the, it'll have to cycle through 20, 30, whatever, how many years? Dude, do you really think, do you think a housing cycle is that long? I feel like a housing cycle is eight years. Well, how long like, it takes a person to sell and buy? That I feel like that's how long this will take to get I totally- I think the generation of the person living there, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. the generation. Because again, ultimately we're talking about is, is, what, is the government really behind this of saying, all right, the more that we can start holding back yeah. the transfer of wealth or, or creation of wealth, right? Then what does that mean? That means that you're, you- as a citizen, you as a just you know, you occupying the state. I don't even know what that what we would call it anymore. It's a decent way to put it. I guess. Yes. <laughs> now, are you you are going to need to be more reliant because things are going to be more expensive? Are you going to need to be more reliant on government subsidies? And now you're on the the quote unquote government, whatever you want to call it. So this um, is like the fun red pill conversation, right? Is it, it, there's an article we were reading, uh, reading a little bit earlier. I was reading on my phone. We were talking about this exact topic. And, and detractors of the idea that something might be afoot would say that uh, they would point to statistics like what you just pointed out with Blackstone, right? They own like less than 3%. Institutional investors combined own like less than 5% of all single family homes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like a, a large number. Uh, that in and of itself makes it feel like to somebody who wants to say that this is kind of all rubbish would say, well, like, they're not even making a dent. This is ridiculous. You're 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 crazy for even thinking that. If you look at other trends in our society, especially when it comes to things like home ownership, if you were to pull up the amount of um, uh, mortgages created before and after Louis Ranieri came up with the mortgage-backed security in the early '70s, it's night and day. 
Because what happened is because that became a blue ocean on Wall Street. They decided I can create mortgage-backed securities, enhance my returns, give all these pension funds a place to put their money, and I could sell the paper like over and over, and then we could create synthetic CDOs. It took off like wildfire, right? It's not really about what has happened in the past. It's the trajectory of what's happened in the future. Because you can say, yeah, they own less than 5%. But if you look at 2021 in North Texas, 28% of all transactions were to institutional buyers. The trajectory is picking up because untapped wealth to the point where you have to use the word quadrillion is a blue ocean of wealth that if you could find a way to tap into by making it really easy to sell your home to an institution, you're just opening up a massive opportunity as a company or as a series of companies or as a lobbyist group that has connections to the right people that can say, hey, you know what? What if we got in between realtors and buyers and sellers and made it way easier for them to make that decision to transfer their wealth to us over time, right? That trajectory is what is 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 very concerning about this. Well, and, unless you brought up institutional buyers. Mm-hmm. Was that, and and I was around in the real estate market in 2005, really selling 2006, and then really, really ultimately selling 2007, right? 2005, 2006, it was, you know, more of the assistant support role. Yeah. Um, and then 2007, I went really full on in this. I don't recall hearing about any type of true corporate or institutional buyer back then. It started after... You know, we had the 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 Great Recession. Yeah. Right. And during that fallout, there was a whole bunch of uh, foreclosures. Yeah. And then that's when it's that's when I had started hearing about all these companies. Yeah. I think it was Invitation that was really big at the yeah. time buying here, buying m- like 20, 30 houses a month. Yeah. The culture really used to be that REITs were commercial entities. They bought commercial property. Yes. It wasn't until the Great Recession that REITs started buying single family homes in bulk. Yes. And so so now we're saying, all right, 5%. The Great Recession was st- is less than 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And they own 5%. Yes. So what happens in another 20 years as, as that? Because again, everything starts happening in a hockey stick. Yeah. And now they own 20 to 25% of the market. This is like just a... Very brief sidebar, but I do think that it's really relevant. So I, I'm a big Ken Burns head. Anything that Ken Burns does, yeah. like you know, we used to have the the, the freaking baseball, baseball documentary, documentary, the New York the one, war like stuff. Repeat. Oh my gosh, I'm on episode four of the Vietnam War right now, um, which has always fascinated me, and I got lady into it, my wife as well, and she's horrified by it. Uh, but it's it's we're in like year 1965 now, so it's been. Everything since the Geneva Convention after World War II, the French colonization, colony, colonization, I'm sorry, of Vietnam, which started it all, which those guys suck, uh, all the way up until now. And just the trajectory of we're not helping, we're not doing anything to we're going to place a couple military advisors and keep it really quiet to we're going to give a little bit more money to all of a sudden we have 11,000 people in Vietnam to all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. We have to send 200 troops at a time, like the buildup and the secrecy around it. Like if you don't really believe that the United States government is capable of doing things out of sheer irresponsibility and ego for their own gain. Um, Man, just go watch one of those documentaries around one of the critical mistakes that we've made over and over for years at a time that's cost American lives. Um, The housing market isn't a blip on the radar for the ego of the people at the top. It's really to see, it's really easy to see too, with a little bit of like just looking back and at like how this kind of happens, right? Like you, it starts with the distraction of humans over and, and, and ultimately just selling them convenience. This is one of the things I'm pushing back in my life against the most right now is just paying for convenience. It's no longer convenient. We got rid of cable thinking streaming was going to make it better. Now it's hundreds of dollars more to watch the same fucking show. And it's shows. more complicated. You We've got like done 40 different apps. With everything. Instacart was amazing. Airbnb was amazing. Now it's just as cheap. To go. We are finding yeah. out that the way we did things was fine when it came to this stuff, right? Like, And I'm, I'm becoming less and less impressed with convenience. But as I look out, I am seeing more and more people diving deeper and deeper into convenience, which is exactly what the iBuyers offer. Because they would be willing to lose a little bit of money now to own you later. But think about it this. And use, there's two things, two points I want to make, right? Or, or two, one point and then something we talked about on previous shows several years ago. Um, the first point is like, 
Everybody you, knows the episode number. I don't. I don't actually. <laughs> He's um, really good on that. Um, but you know, you said this about you know cabling and and unbundling that right, and that it was thought to make it cheaper and we'll have better programming. And now we're actually spending more. For most people, we're spending more for that, right? And that's and that theoretically could happen with the the kind of uncoupling of how commissions work. Yeah. Right. So. It, like, look, you get a little group and they're like, yes, this is so expensive. I'm like, look, you also, your your home value rose 300%. That was the point I was going to make. Right? So your home value rose 300 freaking percent. Right? You're still in the green. Yep. And this isn't this isn't trading stocks where you, where you click a button and, and you know, you have to worry about disclosures or non-disclosure or anything like that. Where, like, now you got E-Trade that, you know, I don't even know if it takes really a commission. I don't think they do. Because when I sell things, it doesn't. But yeah. um, you know, that's that's really allowed that. This is more complicated. There's more emotions involved. There's I'll even bring up something today. Like in, in almost 20 years of doing this, I had something come up for the first time today that you know, here in Texas, in our contract, it says that a seller needs to provide a non-foreign affidavit stating that they're not a foreign person. Right. I'm like, okay. Well, that's always been in there, but we've done thousands of transactions. Never come up. Yep. Now it's come up to the point where this buyer's demanding this person to sign a non-foreign affidavit and include their social security. And we're like, eh, we don't really feel comfortable with that, but it's required. And as a buyer's agent. I know right where that shit is in the contract too. And I'm yep. always like, this is Set so paragraph weird. Paragraph 20. It seems like it'd weird. be the other way around. It does. Yep. It feels weird. Yep. You mean affidavit if you are a foreign yeah, person. Exactly. Like, this makes yes. no sense. And honestly, I Just think. To let you know, I've lived here for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I think I, I think that should be a title company deal. That should be a whole different story topic. But, yeah. you know, as a buyer's agent, buyer's agents are the ones that actually need to be protecting their clients. And I will tell you, this is this is for the first time come up. And again, thousands of transactions. And if if a buyer agent doesn't know or continue to educate and, and provide better value and service, you know, it actually screws your buyer over if they ended up buying a, a person's house who was foreign and that foreign person did not withhold the tax or, or uh, put the tax. Your your client as the buyer's agent is now on the hook for paying that tax to the IRS. We, we legitimately, Latasha and I are having this conversation today, just working out a difficult deal. There's a million moving parts. We had to move HOA document date back because we want to make sure the HOA docs were delivered in time because that's a point where you could terminate the contract from the buyer's side. It's almost a second option period if you know what you're doing. We, we needed to get a vendor to take payment after closing because the seller needs a little bit of extra time in order to replace this big ticket item. So we had to convince a vendor to go ahead and take take title or take money at closing and do all these. There are deals. And again, we've said this on the stage before. We have done a horrible job as real estate agents of highlighting the hard work we do because we all want to look so cool like every deal is easy and we're just wearing right. Jordans and freaking jumpers and take, all the time and, no, we're doing, and chilling we're, we're out. Wearing, we're wearing pajamas when we get into the one side of the car and then yes shoot, nobody wants to nobody, wa nobody wants to talk TikTok? about <laughs> nobody wants to talk about the deal that they did below the median price of their market and had to kick in money on and they probably work 10 times as many hours as they did. They just yeah. want to flash you That's whatever awesome. else it is, yeah. right? And it's like, awesome. we have also put ourselves in, in, into the crosshairs by acting like this whole thing is just dollar dollar bills. Yeah. Society in general yeah. has done that, but yeah, we've not done it. Yeah. done ourselves. We've anything. we've we've been at the forefront yeah. of some of that. We, yeah, every sales based yeah. industry, especially ours, has been at the forefront of. I don't have to work that hard, and I get paid a lot. Yeah. and like, we brag it, like, and they true. brag about it, right? Yes. And the ones that do actually don't last in this business, by no. the way, because they they don't take this job seriously and, and and make it a career and actually, you know, become a true expert. But the second point I was going to make. From I think it was back in 2019, we brought this up about open door, right? And you know, at, at one point, you guys were on the premise of really saying that you weren't worried about it because look, as clients, they want your expertise, right? And my whole point during that time was they're taking at bats away. It doesn't matter that the you client did, yes. will want us, right? Yep. And they're taking at bats away. And this is the th same thing with institutional buyers. We don't feel it until it's too late. Right, right now, they're going to say it's five percent. That's nothing. Yeah. That's single digits. But what you don't see is the trajectory of where they're going because they don't talk about that. Yeah, they don't talk yeah. about how much money they're putting into lobbying. They're not talking about what's happening over here. To to be clear, you I mean you're hitting the nail on the head. I I don't necessarily worry about um, that type of value long term in a pure market. Meaning, I think that 
the cream rises to the top and and our expertise and the things that we provide are valuable. And, and over the long term, I do believe that companies like Open Door in a pure market, we wouldn't have to, to worry about anything. Uh, this is what we're talking about right now is government intervention in a pure market. And so that I don't like at all. That changes the narrative entirely. Um, that definitely is. But when you have both going on, yeah. what ends up happening is, as from, again, to to keep it on the track of the only real estate podcast worth listening to, to, to really talk into the you, real estate Pfizer. real estate agents who their income is is, you know, determined on the amount of clients they can help and the commissions they earn. Right. You take more and more opportunities away. You take more properties off the table that are going to sell and exchange hands. Well, now we're talking about an industry that's no longer. I agree. And, and this is and, and sorry, I'll let you, just, just before all this point is in my head, I, the educating the consumer is so important here because you got to think that every every home that gets sold to an institution is now out of circulation. Yeah, there's no reason for them to really put it back. on. Right. That wealth has disappeared from the American the American society, as it were, the general public. It is yeah. no longer available wealth going forward. But we are making more people. Yep. Right. And we're making less land. We're not making any, right? And so over the long term, you can see how two plus two makes a problem there, yeah. right? Um, and I don't know where our duty or our ability to educate people on that comes in, but you got to understand that every single asset that ends up in corporate hands no longer has the ability, or I should say it has the ability, no longer has the probability of ending back up in public hands at some point. And so the same way that you and I can't own a lot of assets in America. I can't go buy a jetliner, for example, right? Um, not yet. Not yet. Uh, the idea of owning a home becomes less likely with every asset that changes into corporate hands. And so that convenience you're trading is actually wealth that the American people probably won't get back as a whole. And that is the bigger issue. And the cynic in me says that's impossible to solve because everybody's always going to look out for themselves. It's it's the same mentality of my vote right. doesn't count, so I'm not yes. going to show up. Watch that right? fucking Vietnam because War documentary. Every, I swear the idea of looking out for yourself is pervasive. It just, it just, <laughs> it, we, we've just, again, I think this is all how we've, we've, is some of it just taking advantage of how the flock has moved? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Is some of it is some of it like calculated? Sure. But we have gotten I think we've just gotten to a point in society where this is the stuff that we've made really easy on large corporations who have billions of dollars to deploy like Blackstone. Right. Oh, yeah. And all you have to do is come to me and say, hey, Jeff, I know you want to get out from this house and everybody's lowballing you and you don't want to pay real estate agent commissions. I'll give you 95 percent. Jeff's like F everybody else in Stonebridge Ranch. Mm -hmm. I'm out of here. And that is how you slowly pick off one lame duck at a time. Yes. When the pendulum swings is actually a scarier scenario. So what I mean by that is uh, right now, there's a large enough buyer pool. Institutions own 5% or less, right? Let's just say. So it's a large enough buyer pool that I don't have to make that choice necessarily. I'm only doing it out of convenience. Like my marketing as an institution has to be pretty good to show you why it's more convenient to, to sell to me. And it is for the most part. That's why the trajectory is picking up. At some point, the pendulum swings where enough assets are corporately owned that now they have the power to control the market because they are the aggregate buyer. And that becomes very scary because imagine a scenario in which 75% of homes in America are owned by a corporation and the person that has the equity that's most of their net worth is looking to sell where there's a very small buyer pool because people really don't have, it's not in vogue. They don't have the wealth to buy homes anymore. And those corporations will go, I'm going to give you 70 cents on the dollar to what I would two years ago. Cause I control the pool. No one now. thinks like what happens. It's like what no happens when it's like, what happens when you want to get your product in Walmart, but you, you know, you take their price, bro. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> and what will happen in between is exactly what happens when you have a run on the bank. As soon as people feel that their wealth is trapped in an asset whose value is declining, they will Property want to run time. for the exit. Well, they will want to be the first one out the door. But because this is, look, this individual property owners, it's the same thing Kelderman said. is like if the thought process is my vote doesn't count. I sell to them. It doesn't matter. It's just one little property. But if you look at this as a business, it's the same thing that happened at diapers.com. right? Diapers.com was the largest supplier of diapers. And then Amazon came in and made them off. And they're like, you know what? F off. And you know what Amazon did? They started selling diapers at Amazon a loss. Amazon.com backslash diapers. Yeah, they started yeah. selling <laughs> they started selling diapers at a loss yeah. and started taking customers away from diapers.com. Yep. 
to the point where diapers.com was like, uh Oh, and yeah. then what happened is they went back to Amazon and Amazon lowered yeah. their offer. Of course they did 40 cents on the dollar. So this is the same thing. Like you just said, Brian, yes. at a certain point when, when, you know, corporations, the I institutional buyer, the, the, the government lobbied groups own 50, 60%, your property, theoretically, you're like, maybe it, it's worth more because I can just go and say, Hey, this is not owned. And you can, you can go buy yeah. this individual buyer. How, but do, how do you guys reconcile being okay with capitalism, but not because this, I struggle with this, right? And, and I don't know if I being okay with capitalism, but also understanding there needs to be some kind of boundary on this. There are two conversations that derail my work day these days. <laughs> One of them is the Vietnam War documentary that I've been talking about for last week with Duncan. And the other is uh, the concept of our inability at, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole at, at 30 at the 36 minute mark, but um, there's a book I read recently called 21 lessons for the 21st century by Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, he wrote, if you're familiar with, he wrote a bunch of bestsellers, Sapiens, Homo Deus, really good books. He's a, he's an Israeli kind of philosopher and, 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 and thinker. Um, and he brings up a lot of really good points around every species ends up hitting a point where they're not able to conceptualize the problems they face. And that usually is the tapering off of, of their, their reign as a dominant species. To your point, I don't know how to conceptualize that. I don't know how to, how to, how to find the moral ground there between capitalism and, and the regulation needed to protect people. But there are, and there are a lot of instances like that in our society today. I believe that we are peaking as a species in our ability to conceptualize the problems that we face moving forward to where our our political and social environments will become so volatile because there really are no right answers. I used the example with Duncan the other day, and we were just thinking on this, and Jesse, right? The freedom of speech one and the Miley Cyrus tweet. Like if Miley Cyrus walked into a bakery and like got in a fight with a bitch in line, <laughs> That was a way weird way to say that. <laughs> yeah, she could. I'm just going through her 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 lens of being angry, right? Um, she could literally like do one tweet and be like, "Don't ever come to this bakery again." Yep. And they did nothing to her, and it might actually be really great. But she could literally ruin someone's life just by tweeting that because she has so much influence. What's well, like the guy that came to town? The uh, what's his uh, name? Keith Lee. Keith Lee. I don't yeah, know what that is Keith Lee is the, the sweetly seasoned people did it to themselves though. Well, what is, sure, but Keith this? Lee, this guy became an influencer over just trying food. He has no. He's got about 12, 12 million followers on TikTok. He goes around. He lets places know before he comes. He came to Dallas. You have to look up Keith Lee sweetly seasoned. It's okay. a little bit old news now, but essentially he he gifted them four grand and and the money didn't go where it's supposed to go, and he had to make oh. a release about it. But it it this food truck. It was the it was the owner's fault. Yeah, sure. but he d would have the same influence okay. if if he would have decided to yeah, do if he something. Said this anyways. food doesn't taste great. Then oh, it, I then it either affects or if he says it's great, there's yeah. lines at the door. I bet you there's a line at Hutchins probably right yes. now because yeah. he said Hutchins oh, yeah. barbecue was awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aaron it's Franklin, been... like yeah, uh, 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 no, that's that. Not, yeah, that's not, um, anyway, yes. So probably a great example. And and then my my theorization around it is like. It doesn't even need to be justified. Like maybe in that sense, he actually tried the food or something like that. Like this could have nothing to do with it. You just want to hurt that person. And because you have enough influence, you could literally like you could have not even ended up ordering anything and just do it just to spite someone. Uh, and it could fundamentally ruin that person's life because you have gained a certain amount of power, which didn't used to exist. When we came up with these laws or lack thereof we didn't have the ability to hold so much power. You used to actually have to physically go out and lobby people if you're going to change their mind about something. Now you just have to get famous and tweet about it. Uh, and it can genuinely damage people. But where do you draw the line on freedom of speech? Should it be okay because you're technically allowed to say whatever you want as long as you're not actually inciting violence against someone? Is it covered under free speech that you can ruin someone's life like that? And I don't have the answer for that. And I don't know that any of us do. And there's only going to be more problems like that to solve in the future. And I don't think we're prepared to solve them. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a right or wrong. Like, again, you're never going to find everyone siding with the right answer. Right? Even like, more so. Or, 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 or yeah, the, less, agreeing, less, so less so now. Or yeah. agreeing that there's a truly right answer to yeah. it. Right? You're going to have both sides that think or believe that their side is the right way mm -hmm. to go. And, you know, there there's, you're right. You, you talk about capitalism and, and less government involvement, 
But at the same time, less government involvement when you have these these corporations also lo- lobbying the government. This, right? is, right? This, is, so, this is very similar if you've ever been a human who's had to shut up while somebody else talks shit about you. And you've just had to be quiet or watch somebody else tell their version of events or watch somebody else just slowly erode themselves while you can say nothing. Yeah. Right. This is kind of like the global exercise in that personal endeavor. Yeah. Right. There is an aspect of this of we are just having to, unfortunately, the same people are quiet, right? Like, I still think there's just a large vocal majority on each side of every issue that's just super loud. I feel like a lot of what we're dealing with, though, is a common sense stuff still makes sense. I mm-hmm. don't think Blackstone should be able to own more than 300,000 properties or even that many. I don't think rent control makes sense. We also own a property management company where I know that's not the case for most yeah. investors. They are onesies and twosies and they need that thing to be closed every month. So it, it just, it's hard to say that Blackstone shouldn't be able to do what they want to do yeah. because we have, there's a personal interest for people we know. And you can also overdo something to the point where it's detrimental to the greater good. But you can right? also, and yeah. as a real estate agent, you can also make a lot of money selling institutional buyers. Absolutely. Right? So, like, <laughs> so like, again, there's always the other side. People don't like this combo. They are jumping the no, F off. No, dude. I noticed that. I mean, you know, you start, you start going and look, it's also because it, it really confuses the mind. I like think you so start too. thinking it about does. it and it's, again, it's the magician trick, yep, yep. right? You're, you want it. They're having you focus here when all the, the real work is happening off over here to the side, but you can't, you're not focusing on it. And some of this feels like, again, if you are not a conservative, if you're not a Republican now, cause that's really polarized or you're not voting yeah. red. Yeah. I mean, th- that's why people think these conspiracy theorists are all just Republicans because it's kind of gone that way lately. That's what, that's the like the the flavor of the day is the the far right conspiracy thing. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so so when you start talking about these, it's like oh yeah, got to be ultra conservative. Get your MAGA hat on, and that's not always the case. It's like let's look at what's really happening. Let's let's get rid of all yeah. this and let's look at what's really happening. Yeah, and, and I would say the majority of this conversation is us being saying, "Hey, the regular guy's getting screwed." Yes. Yeah, right. Like if yes. you're hearing, if you're hearing any elite level business talk here, well, you are having a different conversation than we are because <laughs> I'm agreeing that it is too hard for people, and and there is some shit that should change. I, look, uh, it pains me to say, but I believe there should be regulation on, you know, the type businesses or corporations, the amount of property they can own, like some sort of process which again when you say process that's open to manipulation now like process by which you have to prove that your business model is somehow aiding the greater good sure and then you also right? then you can also go down like but then that's easily manipulated corporations that are that are foreign entities yeah. should, well that's the other side right? of should, this should too, a right? foreign entity be able to come and own and start buying up a whole bunch of commercial property Jesse, and who, do we work who with? owns I, the plaza hotel in new york Am, am I looking that up? Yeah. Jeff. Oh, okay. I thought I thought Jeff. I think we've already had this conversation, but go ahead for the kids at home. Who owns the Plaza Hotel in New York? And then I'll tell you why. That's well, you important. want you want to play a funner game? Ask who owns the North Dallas Tollway because it ain't a company that uh, lives. Our, it ain't a company from the United States. That's a great right. One. Like, there's just so much shit that's just owned by people who are not that's us. Great one, right? Katara Hospitality. So, whereas Katara, you could probably guess from the yeah. name. Are you yeah, said Arkansas. So, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Uh, and where did the president used to stay when visiting New York City? Did he stay at the plaza? Trump Towers? No, he stayed at the plaza. He does not anymore because we sold that building to a foreign non-ally. Yeah. So when you look at it, look, again, you look at this, should there be regulations on that? Like, again, you can go down these rabbit holes so much that that is like i yeah I, i'm sorry just looking at this, that is like capitalism for sure that is bananas to me that a non-ally can buy the building where the president used to stay in manhattan seems very uncomfortable to me right i mean <laughs> again but if that makes you uncomfortable then at the same time then knowing that five percent of all single family homes is owned by a corporation that again it's a small percentage that it's actually going to enter back into the to the pool of uh, potential available homes for the individual buyer so that they can then go buy this house, live in it, fix it up, let appreciation happen and then sell it and then be able to either upgrade or, you know, give it to their children and, and start creating hopefully some generational money 
And to me, it's designed to keep them down, keep them working, or and to get them on the government style programs that that always is going to keep them, you know, under under you know lock and key. Oh, there we go. Oh man. Well, explain to me. They, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we were just deep diving further into this, which just parlays exactly. Yeah, what you're saying, Qatar right? hospitality like, is government owned by Qatar. Yeah. This it's, it's, it's just a kind of tie a bow on this right like i know this is a kind of a fun red pill conversation or interesting i shouldn't say fun red pill conversation but most people in our society have one primary wealth building vehicle and i do fundamentally believe that the doj's meddling is a direct threat to that wealth building avenue and they're not making new wealth building avenues for the most part no, not better than homestead um, ownership. Oh, and so is this a design to get a universal income in place? Oh, jeez, oh, we're oh, <laughs> part two next week. Um, I just I'm very because you've heard the cities that have tested this out. Um, Austin is one of those cities. Is Austin one of them? Seattle was one. Too, Seattle, right? Austin um, has been some of those cities that have. How's it going? Um, I mean, we'll have to ask them. Okay. Mixed reviews. I'm, I'm, I'm going sure. to Austin next month. I'll report back on the amount of public peeing I see. Yeah. I mean, I would say that ultimately I, I'm sure that the, the test is short enough to make it look very good for their results and not long enough to determine what is the ultimate effect. Yeah. Uh, what's the ripple effect overall? So, and, and honestly, again, I think that we have kind of seen it if we look at even how COVID happened and COVID money and when COVID money stopped and turned off, um, why we are also now seeing the average American uh, living well above their means, um, even more so than normal, yeah. why they're living, why credit card debt has ballooned up and that ultimately in 2025, we could see a credit card bubble burst and, yeah. and that could be a whole nother fun conversation or Nick's, not so fun. Depending I can tell you right now, Nick is super psyched about two goose, two five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it has me like, there's a lot of, again, we look at storm clouds on the horizon. Yeah. There's always storm clouds and you have to determine which one do you believe is going to turn into a hurricane five. Do you feel like, so are we still in a, a stagflation mode <sighs> or will the question. credit crunch really spike or, uh, Probably increase unemployment or not increase employment because people will be working for a lower wage just so they can pay their credit card bills. I, I mean, look, unemployment. What is the real number of unemployment? First off, depends on what measure you use. If you're going to count um, actual people employed full time or actual full time jobs filled, because those are actually two different measures. And that's a fun little game they yeah. play when they report the numbers. Yeah, um, I don't believe I. I, I want to make sure that it's full time employment where people can actually you know, live above poverty. Right. Um, and I also want to look at it where, why are we seeing large companies laying off their workforce mm. where Nike just announced they're laying off 2% of their workforce. Nike did. Yep. When? Today? Uh, I think it was like two or three days ago. Oh man. Um, you're seeing and hearing more and more people losing their job. You're hearing more people that have lost their job that is going months without finding gainful employment. Um, and that's happening more and more than ever. And, you know, we're seeing, again, credit card debt ballooning. And ultimately, those that starts to come to a head. We're, you know, the average American is not the gov U.S. government where they can just keep creating money and having trillions of dollars worth of debt. And they just keep kicking the can down the road. Eventually, they're going to have, you know, they're going to have to pay their dues. Yes. And it's going to come in a form of either bankruptcy or, you know, bad credit. And then they can't buy anything then. Um, and finance anything, and ultimately, it's it's not going to be fun. No, you have to pay the piper at some point, and it is almost once again like what is happening on the ground doesn't match what's happening on CNBC. If anybody has a way for us to go back and search old videos for keywords, I would love to know what that software is because I think there is so much tie-in to the things that we were saying in 2019 and 2020 to what we're saying now, and I would love to be able to stitch us with us just to high five ourselves because I think there's, I think there's so like so many of these conversations seem like we were almost foreshadowing the kicking the can down the road that we have been talking about this in detail for a long time about how this was not going to work forever. There was no way we were going to be able to continue. What does that say? 
4,250 jobs at Cisco laid off. That's five percent of Cisco's workforce. That's so. what I'm saying. Is you're starting to see you're starting to see huge numbers of people getting laid off, and then and then those people not being able to go out there and find employment that matched what they had, right? Yeah. Which that's a whole other deal. I don't know. Well, that again, that is uh, another thing that you're starting to see is you're starting to see the job openings that are there. They're actually their pay structure is decreasing. I'm with and, Brian, and I think we've peaked as a society. <laughs> I look, think just as a society, we're at the tip top of it. Yeah. it this look, is as good as it all gets. Look, this sounds negative, but remember this. Money changes hands when problems are solved. There's always problems in the marketplace. You know, the the beautiful thing about America, I was talking to a, uh, a dad at soccer uh, last night, and, and he's not from America, but he said America is still the best place to live and the best place to, to build the dream. Agree. Right. And so this is still the best opportunity. So there's a lot of crap out there. There's a lot of shit going on. It's all negative. But if you look through that and understand what's going on and and not get this kind of fog brain because you're getting so much stuff thrown at you, you're like, man, you know, what? I don't even want to think about that. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out how to survive right now. So it's allowed. It's it's it's, do, it's doing that on purpose, yeah. Yeah. so that you don't want to think about what's really happening, and and not creating solutions to these problems. Yeah. And then if you were to create some solutions, you can capitalize on it, and maybe you become the next, you know, uh, I buyer, institutional buyer, and now you're owning five thousand, and then we're talking shit about you, <laughs> right? You know, but you know who you need to go support is Mortgage Mike, and and he'll give three thousand loans this year. Easily, 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 easy. right? Easily, three he's on track. Months. Yeah, just go to mmgloans.com, mortgage Mike. He's giving you that mortgage Mike stamp of approval again. Um, like he really wanted me to get this point across. And I don't know why we didn't do this before. He is a mortgage broker, so he's able to cut out that fat, that middle management, all those extra fees that that these mortgage bankers charge, right? So he's able to give you competitive rates, which means the lower rates, not the higher ones and the higher fees. He doesn't do that. So get with Mortgage Mike, mmgloans.com. And then once you get a home under contract, right? And it's not an institutional buyer that's picking this thing up. You know, you've got the average Joe, who was the guy during the election in 2020 they were really promoting? Was it Joe? It was Joe Plummer. Was I think Joe, it was Joe, Joe Plummer. Plummer. Joe Plummer. 2020. That was like 2000. 2016. Or was it? I don't know. Oh, it was 2016? Maybe. I but, thought that was a Bush era thing. I don't know. But you know, know when just do Joe out. the Plumber. Yeah, Joe the Plumber. Right? So you're you're helping Joe the Plumber get into the house. He, Joe the Plumber wants a home warranty. Oh, it's an Obama thing. Oh, it's Obama. But right. Joe the Plumber wants a home warranty. And he wants it from Ar Armadillo because they have that hard shell protection. So go over to armadillo.one forward slash tour, T O R E. Just for fun, dude, Joe the Plumber, where is he now? Oof. He probably owns the company. I don't know if we want to know that. Because he probably owns the biggest plumbing company on earth. I think the Clintons took him out. Oh, oh shit. It's a dies. Oh, my gosh. Shit, I told dude. you. Um, I, that was a joke. But He died. Oh, gosh. He... Damn it. Uh, well, well, that was backfired. Yeah. And he's 49. Oh, it was yeah. like six months ago, too. Yeah. Oh, damn it, I'm sorry. Um, Brian, Brian just yanked the e-brake yeah. on this show. Exactly. <laughs> Theron is going to pull his sponsorship. Stop um, stuff so I don't say. listen to Brian, but go to armadillo.one forward slash tour, T-O-R-E, for the best uh, best home warranty out there in all 50 states. And then um, Dana Wynn, right? We do own a property management company, and the individual investor still needs to leverage their time out. And so they need to go to Homeward. Patrice, DM. we don't need. Come on, girl. <laughs> Some dog pilot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, you need to leverage your time out. You don't need to be managing that. That's not what the I, the institutional buyers do. They got people to manage all their stuff for them. Be like them. And uh, go to HomewardDFW.com. And then uh, I think everyone needs a show so they can get their message out about, about the red pill. <laughs> or not the red pill. I don't know. But Jesse at Tour Studios, tourstudios.com. He'll take care of you. He'll make you look good. No matter what you believe in, he'll put it out there for you. He will. Yes. Yeah. No matter so, what you say. No he's not here to know. judge. Yeah. He he produces this show, so obviously he's yeah. super not concerned. Yeah. But his he was not reputation. shaking his head yes on any other stuff we were talking about. <laughs> he was there stone-faced. So that was uh was that our first conspiracy show? First think, of many. Yeah. First, uh, first, yeah. first, first get, planned get conspiracy ready, folks. show. Yeah. Yeah. Get ready, folks. Yeah. I right. think Brian had a conspiracy about AI. Probably. We've had quite a few. A, bit. a yeah. few. Tam Tamara, I don't know what happened to my headphones just now, but Tamara brought that up. Tamara Gady runs a show with Tor Studios, and she brought up that AI debacle that yeah, brian did. went real deep on i think actually we may not even have that published anymore that uh, i don't think it's out there, there. Once you it is it. or is not i don't think it is no i think, I think we took yeah. that down yeah. 
I mean, in case Brian rubs for, for runs for office, <laughs> someday we're definitely t- with that one needed to get archived. That's hilarious. Or uh, maybe maybe for the right price, you know. Just send Absolutely, that out. if we want to get our messages out. and our our lobbyist tour lobbyist group uh, <laughs> going, long. then uh, we'll, we'll release that video. We're anti NAR. <laughs> go we definitely are anti NAR. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's a few conversations around the NAR stuff too. I see some people leaving there. Yeah. Recently. What do they, what do you mean? Just, I mean, agents just opting out, trying to figure out a better way that, I mean, seems again, it's like the voting thing. It seems impossible. How can, what are you going to do without the MLS? What are you going to do without the stuff? I know we brought this up before. How can all four of us just become the co-presidents and CEO of NAR? People need to share this show out so they can see how obviously competent we are. We just got to run. We're running. We we just need to run. We run as a group. I don't think you run. Can you sign up online? I don't think you run. You apply. We can use Bear. We can use, we can use Barry and the boys as our, like, (laughs) I think that honestly, we could definitely take over NAR. I mean, we couldn't do worse. No joke. No. fair. We got to move to Chicago. I mean, that's uh, well, we're going to relocate it to Texas. Okay. Summers in Chicago are dope because I've yeah, heard really nice. there's a new study out. Gen Z's love Texas versus any other state. They all want to be here. Really? Yeah. Well, yep. That's because well, they're think. indoors all day. Yeah. <laughs> that's because <laughs> they need to go out and touch grass. As yeah. Luke the, the new I don't realize how fucking hot it is. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, but we could relocate it here to a building. That'd be cool. That we buy. That we buy. Yeah, We've been talking about that for a while. Exactly. Yeah. We'll just start talking to Teresa. We'll get some extra. Extra office, space. yeah, <laughs> for NAR. Yeah, Can we put NAR here. That would be great. I know. NAR Global. So, um, all right, boys, awesome. It's go to uh, Tour Studios or no, go to onlyrepod.com. Um, and you can see where all our shows, uh, episodes are, as well as go to the only real estate group worth being a part of. Join that Facebook group and then uh, leave us some reviews, please, because I want to read more great reviews about me, about himself. Leave one about me. Leave leave one about me that you leave a five star, but then also say nothing kind about me in the review. Oh. That would be awesome. Oh. Do that. Great Do that. Matt that Kelly. would be awesome. Every five star review, but just rip on me in yes. however you want. I'm down yeah. for it. All I right. It. Hashtag Keith Lee. Hashtag Elon Musk. Stay hard, Joe the Plumber. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Algorithm. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you for watching. We truly appreciate it. Checking out another episode of the only real estate podcast worth listening to. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead, hit that, that share button, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button, right? We're dropping more stuff on YouTube constantly. If you're on iTunes, leave us a review, please. We're really, really focused on building up those reviews so we can get more searchable content on there. And if you're on Facebook, like everyone else is, go over and search the only real estate group worth being a part of. You're going to want to go join that group. I'm telling you right now, there's so much gold in there. So go join, share us on, on YouTube, and leave us that iTunes review, please. Go do it right now. We'll see you on the next show.